Hello, everybody, and welcome back to State of Sound Stories. We're so excited to have you. We have a very exciting program today featuring members of a couple of NC State acapella groups. It's exciting for us because we've been meaning to do something like this for a long time, and so we're glad it finally got a chance to happen. Um, real quick, just to remind you, State of Sound Stories from University or from from NC State University Libraries invites individuals and groups to share their personal sound stories, their own creative paths that got them involved with sound to highlight diverse ways forward for those interested in making sound a bigger part of their lives or careers. And so this is an especially cool uh, addition because these are current students who maybe sound isn't going to be in their career or maybe they're making it their career now. Um, so we're super excited to have them. The first of our guests come from uh, NC State University, University Zone Ladies in Red. Um, we have Meg Mulder, who is the music director. Can you say hello, Meg? Hello, everybody. And we also have Eliza Barsanti, who is the president of Ladies in Red. How are you, Eliza? Doing good. Happy to be here, Jason. So glad you're here too. So one thing that we'd like to talk about real quick before we start um, with with just the music part of this uh, is the fact that uh, can one of you explain what acapella is before we even get going? Meg or Eliza? Well, let's start with Eliza. President Eliza, what is acapella? What are we going to be talking about today? Acapella is a cover style of music. I guess it can also be an original style of music, but a lot of the times in the collegiate setting, you'll see it as covers of different songs um, that are made using only the voice and vocal percussion. So no instruments, it's just us, which is pretty unique. That's great. Meg, um, what drew you to acapella? Well, I had done choir my whole life um, and honestly really wanted to sing songs that people knew so that people would be excited to be able to come hear me sing as much as my parents I'm sure loved my high school choir concerts in Latin. Um, it's definitely a whole different ball game getting to sing a cappella, sing songs that people hear on the radio, um, opens up a lot of different doors. Well that's great. Well rather than making people wait, let's start with some ladies in red. Um, Meg do you want to set this up for us? Yeah, so this uh, first song that we're showing um, is our first project that we did this semester. Um, special thanks to the NC State Libraries for helping us figure out how to do it. Um, this is our version of Thunderclouds, arranged by our music director from last year um, and performed by the current set of ladies. Let's give it a whirl. Here we go. This is Thunderclouds by Ladies in Red. Thank you. 
some exciting music from Ladies in Red right there. Eliza, um, I guess we should lay down the ground rules of why, I, why I'm excited about this. Acapella, as I told you all before we started, really scares me. I was in an acapella group in, in, in high school, but it was all modern classical. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't us providing instrument sounds and such. Can you, Eliza, can you explain, first of all, we were hearing some percussion, I think from Meg, but uh, Eliza, what is that? What is that role in acapella? Yeah, um, so vocal percussion is a part of acapella. Um, I think it's one of the things that makes it that sets it apart from all other genres. Um, and it's just, it's beatboxing essentially um, and making drum sounds and percussive sounds with your mouth. Um, and so Ladies in Red does workshops on this every year from people who are um, really good at it or have been involved in acapella before and have really been able to hone in on that craft um, because we want everyone to have the opportunity to try it because it is a really cool experience to kind of be the driving force behind a song. Um, and like you said, in Thunderclouds, um, that was Meg. But um, it one thing that's unique about ladies is everyone has the chance to do vocal percussion, um, which is really fun. Yeah, so Meg um, and Eliza, so that means you're all switching off from song to song, is that right? Yeah. Um, Meg, uh, We'll talk about this when we introduce our next guest a little bit more too, because our next guest was was also making videos over the pandemic with their acapella group. Um, but Meg, uh, when you're a vocal percussionist, is it exciting? Is it your favorite role? Is it uh, is there a lot of pressure? Um, it definitely is exciting. Also a bit of pressure. I think it's a little less pressure making a video because um, I can do it a couple times and make sure I stay on track. But performing live, it's definitely a challenge because you're in charge of keeping the, the whole group kind of on beat. Um, so it is a challenge, but it is super exciting, super fun. I really love all of the roles that I get to play. I generally sing alto and I love that as well. Um, but especially as the music director, it's really fun to be able to do the vocal percussion, because then I can really focus and listen in on what the other amazing ladies I'm singing with are doing. I would also so like to add oh, that, go ahead, Eliza. oh yeah, female vocal percussionists are kind of unique in the world of acapella. Um, you don't see that a lot. So it's really fun to be able to sort of sharpen our skills in that realm and bring that to places like competitions or group gigs or group venues, because it's it's not something you see all the time. Yeah, so um, in addition to that, like how how often is it a, a, a all female or all male acapella group? Is that more or less common? I would probably say it's pretty consistent. There's probably as many all female and all male groups as there are co-ed groups. Um, probably more co-ed groups than individual all-female or individual all-male groups. But once you get them together, it's, it's probably pretty comparable. Yeah. Um, and I would add that, you know, there are some unique challenges that these single sex groups do face, for example, in like a competition setting. I know they say it in per pitch perfect, but it's true that, you know, sometimes the lack of those lower voices um, in your arrangements can be a bit of a challenge, but we, we always manage to pull it off. Um, there's also a lot of really cool technology to use to kind of help with that. So for example, like on our microphones, a lot of the time we have Octavizers. So the bass singer um, comes out like an octave below or something like that. So it's, it's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, using uh, what guitar players get to enjoy all the time, pedals that can uh, adjust your sound with the touch of a, of a foot um, on your voice. Uh, it's not unheard of, but I, it's so cool that you get to do it. There's so yeah. much power in that. Um, Meg and Eliza, before we introduce our next guest, you both have titles in your choir here, which means that it is an organization that you're essentially running not only as a group, but also kind of as a business. Uh, Meg, you're a music director. What does that mean? 
Yeah, so my role as music director is definitely different than I thought it would be before COVID happened. Um, in a normal semester, it includes things like counting in the group at a gig or leading rehearsals in person, that kind of stuff. Um, in a virtual semester, some of those tasks are the same, but some of them are different. Um, I'm the one who is putting together the videos, Thunderclouds, which you just saw. I put that together with the help of Jason here, actually. Um, I, I also do the arranging for the group, generally. Um, everyone in the group is welcome to arrange, but it tends to fall a lot on the music director. Um, so I have a couple arrangements out, working on a couple more. It's very exciting. Um, I think that those are probably my biggest roles. And in uh, rehearsals, like keeping people on track, we're all chatty and want to <laughs> hang out. We're like a group of best friends. So it's <laughs> sometimes not the easiest job, but it's it's so much fun. And Eliza, what do you... What, aff what affordances are given to the president of Ladies in Red? Oh my gosh, lots of paperwork, Jason. <laughs> you know, I always, I always say it's, it's a tremendous joy, but there's definitely, I think like the role of president has a lot of just administrative tasks, because like you said, we are a business. We also have a business manager, Simone, shout out to Simone, who does a lot of that stuff. But um, I think my main job is just to make sure that we're staying on track, um, you know, re-registering us as a student organization at NC State, um, making sure that tasks are done um, in a timely manner and that we're continuing to move forward. One of my favorite things that I've been able to do is kind of be the liaison between us and the community along with our business manager um, and form new partnerships for us. Um, and during COVID, one of the things that that's entailed is um, you know, telling people we're not really available for in-person events right now because that's not safe, but we have these virtual options if you want to show them. Um, I've been able to make a fact sheet for Ladies and Reds so that people know we're still here. We're still, you know, doing what we do just in a way that looks a little bit different. That's great. I mean, uh, joining anything in college is a challenge, whether that's a job or uh, an extracurricular activity. And when you make it an extracurricular activity that's creative, that uh, involves multiple different people with different ideas and a business structure, it's extremely, uh, extremely good experience. Like it's marketability, but it's also creativity. It's like what everybody, what every tagline at NC State wants you to do. They want you to be creative while you're making something out of it. So it's great that you all get to do it. And one more before we get to our next guest, Ladies in Red has been around since the early 90s. Is that right? Yes. 1993 is when we were founded. And how does one get involved? Is it a yearly audition process? Yeah. So um, the so NC State acapella auditions happen every fall, usually um, right about when classes are starting. Um, and then we take on new members in the fall. And then if, you know, for some reason we have people studying abroad or a lot of people graduating, we might host auditions um, at different points in the year. And I think all of the groups do that. You know, some of them have periodic audition periods, but you can always count on auditions happening um, sometime in August or September because, you know, it's the start of a new year. We need new members. So that means... Ladies in Red is officially part of the music program at NC State. Is that true? Yes, we are um, affiliated with the music department at NC State. But one does not have to be a music major in order to audition or no. a music minor in order to audition. I think we might only have one person in our group right now who is a music minor. We're a very diverse group and it honestly is a lot of fun. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you. We'll talk more about Ladies in Red uh, as we continue. Right now, I'd like to introduce uh, Chase McCrary from Coordination. Chase, how are you? Hey, Jason. Very excited to be there, to be here with you today and with the wonderful Ladies in Red. Well, thank you for agreeing to do it. Um, I forgot to even introduce myself. I'm Jason Evans Growth. I'm Digital Media Librarian at NC State University Libraries. And I, I, here's the full disclosure. Um, COVID happened and Meg submitted a technology consultation because Ladies in Red wanted to make a square video that acapella groups were doing and she and I sort of figured it out together. 
And then weeks later, Chase did the same, even though he had already kind of figured it out, he was exploring what kind of technology we had available to help. So I met all these folks through traditional library channels, even though I've been interested in this really popular acapella scene at NC State since I got here. Um, so Chase, what are you studying here at State? So I'm a, a major in the College of Natural Resources. My official major is Environmental Technology and Management. And I'm Great. looking at a and couple so, of minors at the moment, but. <laughs> oh yeah, just, just checking out minors is an important yeah, part yeah. of this experience too. Um, and while, while we still have it here, uh, Meg, what, are, what is your major? Yeah, um, I'm an animal science major and I have a double minor in nutrition and health medicine and human values. And Eliza? Um, so I'm double majoring in international studies um, with a concentration in global relations. And my second major is public relations. And my minor is French language and literature. So. Right. So the reason I bring all that up is, you know, Meg just mentioned the great diversity and in, in experience and backgrounds that makes up all these groups. Um, and no one here, including myself, is a music minor or major. Um, but we're all interested in this. And, and coordination is, um, is interesting because it's a little bit different than how Ladies in Red is established. Is that true, Chase? Yeah, that's right. So we do, while well, we do still have uh, a similar structure with the president and vice president and some other roles, supporting roles uh, in, in our kind of leadership structure, we are not uh, currently part of the acapella council at NC State, which has presented us with some, some different challenges, but also some, some wiggle room and some abilities to maybe do, do things our own way, especially as a first year group. Well, let's let coordination speak for itself. Let's, uh, let's uh, can you set up the video that we're about to see, Chase? Uh, yeah, so this is uh, actually our first video that we made. Our first one last semester was our first full semester as a group or only the first semester overall as a group. Uh, and this was one of the videos that we submitted to ICCA's, the International Competition for Collegiate Acapella, uh, to get into the competition. So this is the first kind of impression that we made as coordination. What's the name of the song? Shoulder to Cry On. All right, let's take a look. Here we go. I'm just a shoulder to cry on. I'm just a shoulder. Thank you. 
back all right chase um so that was the first impression that coordination made on anyone huh that's right it's quite an impression you did follow the rule of rock and roll which is you have to have a drum solo um, an epic one at the that's beginning right. of when your I, career when i first heard uh the recording of that i was just i was dumbstruck <laughs> it's like wow so we talked a little bit about how ladies in red auditions how does how do people get involved with coordination? I know it's different. Right. So we've had uh, two rounds of auditions so far. Typically uh, in the ACA Council, you have the mass auditions with the other acapella groups. But since it was our first year and we weren't uh, affiliated with them to begin with, we held our own auditions uh, at the beginning of last semester. And that's kind of how the group got its mass because <laughs> it was five members to start with and and that brought us up to i think at the time uh 14 15 15 uh and then again uh over winter break we had another round of auditions to kind of round out some of our sections that we felt were lacking and that we needed more more singers in so we talked to vocal percussion do you swap around vocal percussion the same way the ladies do so uh not as much in in the in the way that they do we do have uh in there you saw carlos who's one of our music directors and also uh our main arranger and mixer for our songs um and then we have you'll see in our later video during the stream we have brendan fred who's our other vocal percussionist so we got him in the in the winter so we've been we've had him on a few songs but not quite as many since we haven't had him for as long um we do have a all-female song coming up where we have been workshopping with some of our ladies to uh to learn how to do some vocal percussion so that we could you know stay in that theme of an all-lady song so that would be really exciting <laughs> was this something that you did before did you have opportunities like this in high school chase uh, I did. Uh, for three years in high school, my sophomore through my senior year, I was in an acapella group. N didn't have nearly the amount of resources that NC State and University Libraries provides, but um, it was a great time, a great introduction, and really kind of like solidified my interest in this type of music. Was it also in Latin? What's that? Were you also singing in Latin? Oh, or no, did you... not at all. We were very much uh, poppy, a poppy group for sure. Definitely missing out then. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll have to we'll have to work that into one of our coordination sets in the future. Eliza, I didn't ask. I, I, did, did what kind of opportunities did you have prior to this? So <laughs> that's actually a funny story, Jason. I was in choir throughout high school, but I was also in an a cappella group. That was called, get ready, ladies in blue. <laughs> um, I went to an all girls boarding high school that's actually in Raleigh um, and our colors were blue and white. And ultimately our acapella group ended up being called ladies in blue. Um, and much like Chase said, it was an awesome introduction to it, but there weren't as many resources or supports. It was all student led and it was kind of just like we threw together, um, what we wanted to throw together. And it was, you know, it always ended up well, but, um, nothing at the level that, um, we're accomplishing here, but definitely, um, agree with Chase and Meg that once I came to NC state and auditioned and kind of got to know both, you know, the musical side and the community that it was, I, I was hooked. Chase, um, was there an inspiration to get into acapella? I want to ask everybody this, but what, aside from just singing in groups, was there something in particular that drew you to it? It was, I've, 
uh, along with, I think Megan and Eliza both have mentioned, really in, in choir and just uh, very interested in music throughout my whole life. Uh, and definitely through my uh, primary school schooling, uh, I was in choir as much as possible and any, any opportunity for music that I had, I was taking. And when I got to high school and I found out about acapella, which I guess other than Pitch Perfect, it was really my, <laughs> my introduction to it. Uh, it seemed like a, a new challenge and something that I hadn't really tackled before or, or, or tried out. So just it being a, a brand new challenge and something to dive into was, was what really drew me to it. And are you at the foundation of coordination? Are you one of the founding members? I am not actually. So uh, I joined along with the other first uh, nine members in the fall through the, through our fall auditions. That's great. Well, we have a question from one of our viewers, and this is for Eliza and Meg. Uh, what is the most reporting or the most rewarding part about being in Ladies in Red? I'll I'll go first. Um, honestly, it's so rewarding, like hearing the songs put together. Um, in addition to the square video that we showed at the start of this, um, I arranged a winter song that we did around the start of this semester. And we also have a single that recently came out that we'll get to later. And hearing it come together, like like Chase said earlier, when you first hear it, you're just floored by it. Like, that's that's us. That's, that's how we sound. And I think that's probably the most rewarding thing, because as all of us, I'm sure, know, the rehearsals, it's a lot of work. It's so much fun, but it's definitely a lot of work. Everyone in the group has to be dedicated in order for it to all come together. And so hearing that moment when it all clicks for everyone, there's nothing like it. Yeah. I would, Do you feel the same way? Definitely. I totally agree. I think that, you know, one, one of the rewarding sides is like, you know, like Meg said, we put in the work and we get the opportunity to you know, reach and inspire so many people with our music, whether that's like, you know, uh, in 2019, 2019 vibes, it was, you know, going to events and galas across Raleigh and, you know, getting to compete in person. Um, and, you know, we placed at the ICCA quarterfinals last year um, for the first time in Ladies in Red history. So sort of getting those tangible experiences where it's clear that, you know, you've inspired with your music is really cool. But also kind of like Meg mentioned before, we're just, we are like a group of best friends. And so getting to do that with people that you're so, so close to um, is just indescribably amazing. That's great. Um, I think anyone who's been involved in a positive musical experience has that. I mean, there's the jokes about band camp and stuff, but they're totally real. Like you, like when you're not only in a place with someone, but also doing something difficult that turns into something that is ethereally built. That's like, wow, we are, we are those instruments inspiring ourselves and others with all these sounds. It's yeah. really great. And I'll say this, I've been thinking about it the whole time. I wanted to go to college for saxophone performance. And then when auditions came up, I decided I didn't want to because I didn't want to ruin music for myself because it seemed so, I don't know, like political and like I was going to get graded for it. And so instead I focused on rock and roll music that I could write myself in the basement. And in a lot of ways, I feel like acapella is similar. Like you're a group of people, but you have eschewed the orchestra there's like there's no worry about the drummer or the accompanist showing showing up or not showing up um and you're building these bonds as a group um is there ever though do you ever like wonder what it would be like if you had that band you know like i mean i'm not saying that that's not the point of acapella but like i but i wonder was that was it a similar journey that got you to like like we're going to do this on our own i'm tired of waiting around for everybody else to show up chase does that speak to you at all uh i will say it was def it would definitely uh presents the need for a lot more creativity when you don't have that a backing track or or uh or uh musicians behind you kind of filling in that space and it it is difficult at times to when you when you arrange a song you're not quite sure how it's going to hear until you have everybody singing it and then you realize there's something missing and you can't quite figure out what it is and you have to fill in that gap with something that's not 
uh, a drum or a guitar or something you have to you have to work with people to figure out how you can make that feel more full and like has more body to it i i want to listen to uh ladies in red's new single and i want us to think while we're listening about what chase just said and what an eliza and meg were saying too because i'm really interested in the arranging part of this and um so uh, listen wh while we listen to this and i'll have one of you all set this up before you actually go into it but like listen to how voices are covering the chordal structures that a guitar player can just do with one hand or the bass player can can do with fingers and these are happening with voices um eliza and meg do you want to set up the single yeah i was just gonna say um this song was recorded at our most recent and last as of now um in-person concert um so it is a live track and it's probably one of my favorites and I think is a crowd pleaser. I don't know if Eliza has anything to add. Yeah, I agree. This is just a song that we sing. We sing it at a lot of gigs because it's very intergenerational. It's an oldie, um, but it's an oldie that we kind of got to have fun with and put um, our own twist on and put a more feminine twist on as well. Um, so we're excited for you all to hear it. Well, let's take a listen. I'll just let the song speak for itself. Hey kids, shake it loose together The spotlight's hitting something that's been known to change the weather We'll kill the fatted calf tonight, so stick around You're gonna hear electric music, solid walls of sound Welcome back, everyone. That was amazing. So that was recorded in Raleigh last year. Yes, it was recorded um, at our most recent concert at Stewart Theater. So yeah, uh, we so we're not going to see or hear another like in person live performance on this stream. 
um, describe to me what's happening if we were seeing you do that. How many of you are on stage? Yeah, so that was our whole group, which I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Eliza, at that time was 14, 15? Yeah, I think 14 or 15, yeah. Around there. Um, we did not do choreo for this song. A lot of our songs we do have choreo, um, but this one we've had three, uh, it was a trio, so three soloists, and we had them all standing up front with fun sunglasses, red glasses on, um, and we were in an arc around them, just kind of jamming out, having a good time. <laughs> We had a disco ball with the, the lighting people did a disco ball. It was, the, it was such a fun song. We had the best time. Yeah. Uh, what does a, what does a set list look like for a performance? Is it usually, how many songs is it? Usually it's like somewhere between, I think, including our alumni song, which we do every year, we invite alumni and in the concert to come sing with us, maybe 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. Um, so between 10 to 12, I think would be like a standard set list. But again, like depending on the semester, it could be more, it could be less. Um, we're not like you mentioned, like trying to get to any sort of grade or quota. So, um, it kind of just depends on what the group is capable of in that moment. But normally it's, I would say 10 to 12. And so there's 14 of you, all of you have microphones. Mm -hmm. And how many sections? You have three soloists, and then what other sections are there? That depends on the arrangement. Um, some songs will have a solo line and five parts plus VP. Some songs will have four parts with VP and soloists. That's probably the general go-to um, is having four parts generally, an alto one, alto two, sop one, sop two, solo, and then VP. Because um, like... I, Eliza mentioned before, where all female group doesn't have the nice base that um, some of the co-ed and male groups are able to have. So usually it's about four parts, maybe five parts and a solo. Plus sometimes, yeah, sometimes we do have um, an especially low line that we like to call lady base. Um, <laughs> lady base. It's a special honor to be on lady base, yeah. It's a very special part to be on, that's for sure. <laughs> so this is a technical question and then um, because I'm interested, uh, that's a lot of microphones. That's a lot of mixing going on live. Is the sound engineer part of the group or do you rely on that person just being good when you show up at a gig? Um, that's an excellent question. So when we do our concerts, we the sound engineering is very carefully curated to our group. We do a sound check and they adjust all of our levels ahead of time. So there are presets for every song. Um, and so, you know, we, we either, you know, work with the team at Seward Theater or the team that recorded that song for us was Liquid Fifth. Um, they're based in Durham. They're amazing too. It, it just goes to show you how many resources we have around here. But um, Yes, so it's very carefully curated in Stewart when we have concerts, but then when you get to gigs, you might have two microphones, you might have one microphone and have to make it work, you might have no microphones. Um, you, it, I think a big part of acapella is being adaptable. Um, and yeah, so it's, we do our best with what, whatever we get and we try to put on the most amazing performance we can. When was that single released? Um, that was released on New Year's of oh, 2021. Nice. Yeah. Well, congratulations on getting that out. Um, when it, this this question is going to translate over to to Chase, and when we talk a little bit about more coordination, um, are you practicing with microphones when you're practicing in person? Um, we don't do that often. That's like something that comes more into play. Um, around competition season, but the music department has that resource there so that we can practice with um, microphones and it is um, recommended to practice with microphones because, you know, microphones change a lot and they're kind of scary. Like it's a little intimidating. So um, we, we have that option for sure. Yeah. I mean, this is leading to what I think Chase and Meg and I were talking about in our tech consultations. When you suddenly are not able to be in a room with people and adapt that way, you have to use things like microphones and uh, how close or how far away are you from this like thing that could make you sound great or could just not work at all. 
and uh, Meg, I mean, we had plenty of get togethers to talk about it. When you were putting together your first, uh, when you were putting it under thunder, thunder clouds, what did you, how were you feeling about the fact that you were now totally beholden to microphones, sometimes inside of phones, sometimes in other places? Yeah, it was stressful. It was, it was definitely stressful. Um, it was the first time I had ever done a project like this. Um, and I felt like I had the job of the professionals at store theater and at liquid fifth. And I was definitely overwhelmed, but I mean, the ladies really came together and pulled it off. And there were several times when I'd message someone, I'd be like, Hey, can you film this again? Like, I think you're too close. I think you're too far away. Like, could you try to like not like breathe directly into the mic? It was, it was complicated. Um, it was definitely stressful, but such an amazing learning experience. And now that I have figured out and been able to do it, it just opens up so many doors for ladies and makes me more appreciative of all the sound engineers who have done so much for us, for sure. It's an interesting thing. And I think I'm sure I said this to both you and Chase Meg, which is no one, ever gives you that information about microphones early. We all kind of know they're important, but like we all get so good at doing stuff without them that like the the respect that they deserve as an accessibility tool or as a way to like make sure that your music is heard appropriately is sort of just taken for granted. They've been around forever. Like everybody should just know how to use one. And then when you actually have to, you're like, wow, these are amazing. Like we can actually, connect with people and make sound happen in a way that makes more sense. Um, so it's a, it's been an interesting challenge over this COVID year to see how people are dealing with microphones since we're all talking to each other through them. And now you all are singing into videos with them too. And Chase, I, I, I want to ask this too. Has coordination had much of a chance to do live performances? Uh, we have not actually, we have, been fully virtual since the creation of the group. We're definitely looking forward to having some of those opportunities in the near future. Um, once things start opening back up and it becomes a, a safer environment for us to feel okay about our members um, performing live on a stage, but we're definitely looking forward to those opportunities. So how are you practicing? We are fully virtual twice a week. We're on Zoom with the whole group. We're going through songs. We're meeting with our committees. We have different committees under each person in leadership that work on different parts of um, production of a song and our, our public image and, and all that kind of performative and, and public relations type of stuff. Um, so yeah, we're, we've been fully virtual since the, since the group started. That's such an interesting uh, difference from the established front in the early 90s mostly live performance. And then you all just coming right out being like, you know what, we're just going to do this virtually. It We're going to have to learn it that way. It has absolutely been uh, quite a lear learning curve for everybody in the group, but that's what makes it such a, such a close knit community of a group is that we're all putting so much of ourselves into these projects and into the music that we're creating for not just the Wolfpack community, but for anyone who would, who wants to listen. Um, so just everybody really putting in their full effort has has brought us very close in the short time that the group has existed. Is it more challenging for something like Ladies in Red that has to adapt from an in-person experience to this kind of practice situation? It was definitely challenging. Um, we've had a lot of trial and error with what ways work for rehearsal. We've come up with popcorn singing, like in elementary school when you read around the room and different ways to kind of still try to sing together and feel together as much as we can. Um, but it definitely has been a lot of trial and error, a lot of figuring out how to share your audio on your computer through Zoom and figure out how to, who should screen share when and a lot of technical challenges. But I feel like the ladies have adapted so well and similar to what Chase said, um, it really is like a group experience and we're all dedicated and all in it. And so it's, it's a fun challenge, it really is. That's great. Well, Chase, I, wanna, um, I want you to set up this next video which is again, like an, you've made, coordination has made several videos since your inception, right? Right, so this is really um, 
probably our biggest undertaking so far. This one uh, was about four, maybe even into five months in the making um, up until our first really like public release of it. So it was for the, the ICCA's competition, which happened about two weeks ago, um, two weeks ago this weekend, uh, where we were in a quarterfinal with groups from in, from North Carolina, a group from uh, Georgia, and I think a group also from Virginia. And it's a very large, like international competition. So in other quarterfinals, there were many other groups from all over the country and even other, other completely other countries uh, competing. And so this video actually won us first place in our quarterfinal of that competition, which was very big for us. We were, <laughs> uh, we were just on top of the world when, when, we, when we heard those results announced. But uh, University Libraries was actually immensely helpful in the creation of this video because all the equipment that was used for videography was completely 100% provided by the tech lending program at the libraries. So without, without that program and without university libraries and all the work they do, it would have been even more, an even bigger challenge for us to really put together what we were able to. Well, that's, I'm so glad. Thank you for using this stuff. It's why we buy it. So it's exciting to hear that it, uh, it worked out. Shall we take a look at this? And can you, awesome. and what's the name of this one? This one is Courage to Change. All right, let's take, it, let's take a look at it and we'll see you all in a few minutes.
Okay. I'm done. We were having an intense conversation about uh, how tense in-person choral competitions were just then. And we were all kind of about to cuss before we went back to the stream. <laughs> so we'll get to do that when the stream is over. But do you want to, Eliza, do you want to continue with what you were just saying about what in-person competitions feel like? Yeah, so I was just um, telling Chase that, you know, like from someone who didn't compete this year watching, like all of the videos in real time was so intense and cool. And it definitely mimicked the feeling of an in-person competition, which I think like competition days um, at ICCAs in Durham, those are like some of my best memories from college. I'm a senior, so I'll be graduating soon. Um, but it's just like, first of all, you're with your acapella family. You're with your whole NC State acapella family, which is a plus. You have tons of support. Um, you know, you you walk up and you like draw the number that'll show your placement in the show, like out of a hat. Um, and just, you know, the, the vibes of like being in the dressing room with all your friends, like getting yourself pumped up. It's like game day. It's awesome. It's our version of game day. Chase, is uh, you, you were saying how nerve wracking it was and then exciting to hear the results. Um, and you 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 hit first place so what what comes next so yeah definitely uh we were very glad that varsity vocals was able to put together a competition that felt as much like the real thing as it did uh, like you said we were all just like on our toes freaking out when they were when they were holding us in suspense right before they announced the results um but moving forward uh in just um, just over two weeks will be the semifinals for ICCAs. We're currently working on uh, revising our video and revising our audio and, and making it, you know, taking some of the judges' um, criticisms and comments and compliments and really taking those into consideration to see what we can do to improve it for the next round. Um, so that'll be coming up. Uh, we'll submit in just about four days from now. And then the actual live stream of the competition will be up on Varsity Vocals and our uh, our pages on the 10th of April. Um, and then moving even forward past then, we uh, like Eliza mentioned, L5 has been very helpful to many of the acapella groups at State, and we're working with them currently uh, uh, recording an EP that will be coming out later this year, hopefully. <laughs> um, so yeah, both of those things just... I would head over to our Instagram, Facebook website and, and make sure you're following us so you don't miss any, any important information and announcements coming soon. Let's, congratulations on the win and good luck in the, as the competition goes on. I'm just thinking about how when I was in music competitions when I was younger, how I wished I could record it because I could fix it, you yeah. know, rather than relying on everybody to just do it right the next time. It's like, well, we could just fix this. Is there a little bit of relief knowing that, or does that make the judges even more picky because you can fix it? I think uh, definitely with everybody, you know, recording separately and bringing it all together in a software and being able to make those kinds of tweaks and alignments to it, there's definitely uh, more scrutiny in the judging process, but that just kind of motivates us all to, to work even harder and to, to really perfect the little things that, that make it go above and beyond. What's next for Ladies in Red? So we've got a couple things on our horizon. Um, we are also working with L5. Um, we have, uh, we're gonna be releasing our senior song, which is for all of our lovely seniors like Eliza who are graduating. It's a final solo for them to kind of showcase all they've done for the group. So we have that coming up. We're also working on a new arrangement that um, I did this year, the first arrangement of mine for this year um, that we're working on, hopefully doing another video for. Those are probably our, our two, two biggest things. Excited for being in person again when that'll happen. Excited for being able to do competitions again. So I would say that's that's a that's what we're ready for. I don't know if Eliza has anything to add. Definitely. Um, I think that, you know, the, the pandemic in the context of ladies in red was, was kind of, it was kind of tough because, you know, at the ICCAs that year, 
um, we had placed third and we, we built this momentum and it was kind of like, okay, well, how are we going to keep this going? Um, but like Meg and Chase have talked about, there are so many resources at our disposable that at our disposal that we've been able to take advantage of. Um, and we're, we're excited to keep doing that, you know, until things reach kind of the old normal, whatever that was, but, um, yeah, we're excited. And Eliza, you're graduating. What's next for you? Yes. Um, I am applying for a lot of different um, full-time public relations positions kind of all over. Um, And I'm excited to see what's next. Hopefully um, I'll be able to come back to some concerts. Do you think any of you, before we say goodbye, how is your experience with music and these groups going to translate into whatever it is you do next? In so many ways. I think like, the first thing that comes to my mind is just how deeply collaborative acapella is um, and how it really teaches you to kind of recognize your own strengths and other people's strengths and hone in on those. And I think that regardless of any sort of professional or, you know, um, grad school environment you go into, that is a huge asset to have. Meg, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I would definitely agree with Eliza. Um, You definitely get so many skills. And when I started State, I'm hoping to go to vet school. And when I started at State, I was so focused on just getting all good grades and being the perfect applicant that I almost didn't join acapella. And even though some of the skills I'm getting in acapella may seem, oh, it's music, it's different, but it's, it's not. You're working as a team. You're building relationships with people. You're growing as an individual. You're gaining confidence. There's just so many valuable lessons that are learned in acapella that I've just held onto so tightly. And one huge thing also is the community. Like, there is no community like my acapella group for me, you know, and seeing all the groups at state getting to go to each other's concerts. Chase, hopefully we'll be able to go to some coordination concerts soon. Um, getting to go to each other's concerts and cheer each other on. And it's, it really is a sense of community that never goes away. And that's definitely something that I will carry on with me in the future as well. And Chase, you're, this is your first year at State. Has acapella changed what you planned even in the first year? Uh, I think it definitely has. I've, I've, I kind of came to State knowing a lot of people that I went to high school with and expecting like, oh, I'm going to see them all around before the pandemic happened. Um, but I see them all around and, and be great buddies with them still moving on uh, and kind of stay in that same bubble that I was in in high school and joining a group like Coordination where you just are surrounded by, by uh, such a diverse group of people from all different backgrounds and walks of life coming together solely to really enjoy music and to make music with each other it's it's been such a rewarding experience uh for me personally especially in my first year and as kind of an introduction to hopefully what the next three years at state will be like it could be five years you never know yeah Yeah. (laughs) uh however however long you want to stay um it's been such a pleasure talking with all of you i'm so glad that traditional library channels got a got us to this point together and I really do look forward to whatever is next either if I'm seeing it on the internet or if I can see you all in person sometime soon so thank you so much for joining us today thanks so much um so come see us again next Thursday 4 p.m we'll be presenting a state of sound sessions uh and we've got more this semester coming up too so Every Thursday at four, State of Sound something or other. My name's Jason. We're so happy to have you participate in music, participate in groups, build community with creativity, use the libraries, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one, everybody.